it's never too early and it's never too late. Keep showing up. Don't get discouraged. I did not find the PhD easy, but I found it super fun. You're not designed to get everything, to learn everything and know everything. They're bringing you along and they're introducing you to worlds and worlds and decades of academic research and statistical methodology. Take it, do as absorb all you can, do your best and keep moving forward. And it has opened so many doors for me. I think it will professionally moving forward, but just in my own mind of what I think is possible. Welcome back to Mitchell Moments Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Wellborn. I'm a current PhD student at USA, and I'm making the podcast I wish I would have had before starting back to school. I am so excited for you all to hear from a good friend of mine today. Her name is Jen Zogby, and she's in the cohort just behind me. So she started the program one year after I did. This conversation I'm sharing with you today, we had towards the end of her second year, and I think you'll learn from her as well on some tools and tips and strategies for thriving through the program, many of which I wish someone would have shared with me before I started. Fellow student and good friend, welcome Jen Zogby to the Mitchell Moments podcast. Thanks, Stacey. It's great to be with you. Tell us a little bit about you and kind of where you are right now in the process. I started my career as a newspaper reporter back when there used to be newspapers, five years in North Carolina for a business newspaper. So probably my interest in business started as the daughter and granddaughter of entrepreneurs on both sides of my family, but was really nurtured during those North Carolina years when I covered business. Then when we moved back to Mobile, which is my hometown, in 2003, I took a job at the University of South Alabama in public relations, which was a career change for me. And great 10 years at the university, huge growth in students and buildings and programs. And then I had the great fortune of moving within the same organization for a promotion and more experience on the healthcare side of the university. For the next six years, I led marketing efforts for two hospitals and an academic cancer institute and led a team, which was a managerial experience for me and led a bunch of freelancers, worked with advertising agencies. And then uh, finally, at that point, you had mentioned to me that the doctorate of business administration, which I had covered while I was at University of South Alabama, that they had gone to the Alabama Commission on Higher Education and gotten a PhD approval. And like I mentioned, my family is entrepreneurial. My great grandparents and both of my grandfathers were immigrants to this country, and they always really preached education to us. So I always wanted to get a PhD. And when you told me about it in the spring of 2019, I was very excited and looked into the program, talked to Dr. Hare. I had known Dr. Williams for, and respected him for many years. So I started that spring of 2019. And it's been a wonderful, amazing experience. I don't think though, Stacey, when you told me about it, you didn't tell me that there were going to be six statistics classes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I let know, that out. I, I don't think that's quite clear. I was like, Stacey told me there's a PhD. It's at South. I've always wanted to get my PhD. It's in marketing. Uh, and I let my enthusiasm carry me, which it's carried me all the way through. So now I'm very happy to report to you and your listeners that I'm finished with my classes and I have just gotten the great news that I passed my comprehensive exams. Congratulations. Thank you. That was a great, great feeling. And now I'm on to the dissertation phase of the program. So I'm got my dissertation model and I'm getting my research done and uh, meeting with my committee on my survey. And so it's, a, it's an exciting time. Can you tell us a little bit about your research areas and your dissertation? Broad picture. Okay. Very interested in diversity. And I always have been very interested in diversity as a Lebanese woman and growing up in Mobile and as a newspaper reporter and a public relations practitioner I saw a lot of organizations, very well-meaning organizations, try to have increased diversity and yet not be able to implement it. And the academic word, I guess, would be operationalize it. So I am coming up with a new construct in the academic literature. I'm so excited about it that I'm calling diversity ecosystem and how the diversity ecosystem affects corporations or governmental agencies stated diversity goals through their internal marketing approach, which I was a part of for all those years, to their diversity outcomes. Wow. Very excited about it. Once you're completed your dissertation, what's next for you? What are your goals? The thing that I have appreciated probably the most 
as a woman in my 40s going back for this degree is that it has opened up a whole range of possibilities. I feel like I could do consulting work. I would be interested in in doing some full-time teaching as well. I might be interested in taking my degree and working in-house somewhere for a corporation or governmental agency. I feel so fortunate that this degree has shown me yet again that there are a lot of different options for the future. So I'm just keeping my doors open right now. I made a slogan for myself, which is focus and finish, focus and finish. There you go. That's right. Done in 21, baby. Done in 21. (laughs) Hashtag done in 21. I like it. (laughs) I had to make hashtags for myself to entertain myself. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's back up a little bit and tell me advice you would give to someone or things to think about to someone who's considering a PhD program and possibly considering our USA PhD program. I was under a very mistaken impression by the time I got into my 40s that the PhD possibility was gone to me because I was solidly mid-career, family responsibilities with uh, parents and aunts and sisters and nieces and nephews. Uh, a house, friends, a life. And I just assumed that because I hadn't gone through a very traditional program when I was in my 20s, that it was not going to happen for me. But this program is very academically rigorous, but it is designed with someone who has other things going on in their lives. They understand we have other responsibilities in life and they demand a lot of us, a lot of us, but it is structured in a way that it is doable. And what I've told other people, because you were so good to mentor me and encourage me, and I've tried to mentor people in the next cohorts behind me, eight and nine now, is get started. I felt like I waited 25 years wanting to get a PhD. And finally in 2019, even though it came (laughs) starting this PhD a few weeks after I got laid off from a job due to restructuring, my advice to people is, Don't be intimidated. Get started. You can do it. Excellent. So on that theme, what advice do you have for folks who are starting our program to help them survive and thrive through the program? I'll tell them what you told me. Keep showing up. Don't get discouraged. And I say this as someone who always found school very fun, but also, to be honest, relatively easy. I did not find the PhD easy, but I found it super fun. Because I, like I said before, it introduced me to a lot of things. You're not designed to get everything, you know, to learn everything and know everything. They're, they're bringing you along and they're introducing you to worlds and worlds and decades of academic research and statistical methodology. Like, take it, do as, absorb all you can, do your best and keep moving forward. Excellent. So what are some tools that you would recommend to students who are starting the program to be successful? I would suggest something that you and I only discovered later in our arc of classes, but I would suggest it right off, which is start an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of categorization, cataloging method for every article you read. Mm -hmm. And one of our professors who's just recently retired, Ron Eastburn, he had us do how states. So how strategic change leads to firm performance, the how statement, Mm -hmm. how X does something to Y. Try to summarize each article down to that, but put your articles in some sort of a method, whatever makes sense to you. I use an Excel spreadsheet so that you'll remember which articles you read and why they were meaningful. And then make a column also if you have a particular research interest and they can flow into that research interest, that will help you not waste as much time when you go to write a paper. Mm -hmm. And there are many tools out there. So as you said, as simple as a spreadsheet or as advanced as there are certain apps, there are things that will integrate into your Microsoft Word or into your library software. So there are many options out there. And in the show notes, we'll include some of those links. Yeah. And back to tools for a minute. The best tool is the one that you are going to use. A tool is not useful to you if it is on your desktop or on your iPad or on your phone, but never used. That's a great point. Investigate what is best for you on the range of low-tech to high-tech options. Investigate how you want to do it, but start that system as early as you can. Because there would be a lot of times when I would read an article for a class or just for a research project, and 
I would use it for that particular purpose or that particular discussion, but I wouldn't have a catalog of it. So I couldn't use it for research projects. And now that I have the spreadsheet is much easier for me. So find the tools and use them. Great advice. And that could change too, right? I mean, I think tools change over time. So certainly being uh, up on what's happening and what the options are. But I I think your point about use the tools that work for you, because not everything is right for everyone. That's right. And the great thing is, is I know you found this in your cohort and I found this in mine. One of the things I loved most about the program was the camaraderie of my cohort mates. Mm -hmm. And they were very generous with insights throughout the program, including tools that they were using, they suggested to me. So Jen, one of the things we've talked about is the cohort and the relationships that we have within our cohort. And a lot of folks can perceive this type of degree program as highly competitive. Um, What was your experience when it came to that? Was it competitive or how would you describe that experience? I would say that while we all learned a lot from each other and we were all pushing each other to be better. It was not competitive in a negative zero sum way. It was competitive in the sense that we each had personal goals, professional goals that we wanted to reach, which was why we we're investing time and money away from friends and family, away from other hobbies, away from other opportunities to invest in this PhD program. But it turned into a band of brothers and sisters. It turned into we were helping each other get better and move forward and keep going in the program rather than more of a of a high school clickish competitiveness. It, it wasn't that at all to me. And I find while we're all at a point in our careers where we went back from the PhD program, everybody's story was a little bit different based on their family situation, their their time of life when they did it. Because remember, our cohort ranged, cohort seven, our cohort ranged from people in their late 20s to people in their early 50s. And as I've shared, I was very proud to be at the toward the top of that age continuum. And yet we all banded together and we all helped each other, both in our marketing group, but also as a cohort. And part of that is the weekend camaraderie. Most of them, I'm based here in Mobile, but most of them were coming from out of town. So we would go to dinners together. We would have study sessions that turned into just fun sessions. We would study sometimes while a football game was on. It was competitive in the sense that you were competing against yourself to make sure you were meeting your own professional goals for the PhD program. But it was certainly not competitive in a destructive way among each other. Excellent. I agree wholeheartedly. I think my experience was very similar to yours. And the cohort model is so, I think, important to the structure of this program. I think really, I mean, obviously the professors make the program because we learn so much from them. But having the cohort model and the opportunity to spend time getting to know your classmates is paramount. I didn't have any experience with other programs. For me, just where I was coming to the program, I did not compare it to a traditional PhD program that just wasn't in my ability as someone in her mid 40s starting a program with family and work responsibilities and home responsibilities. So I would never have been able to do the type of traditional program where you have to be kind of closeted away with two or three other PhD students in your class for five or six years. I could see where that might be more competitive because you were all just focused on it full time. Our cohort, not only were people working full time and going to PhD school full time, they were raising kids. They were taking care of elderly parents. They were doing things in their community. They were starting small businesses. I mean, we had a range of people doing a range of things. And so that just pointed out, like when we would get together, we each knew how hard it was and we helped each other. Now that you've completed your coursework and are into the dissertation phase, reflecting back, prized you, what surprised you most about the program? How quickly it went, mm. which it's always easy in retrospect to say how quickly time goes, but it does go quickly because you're only together for three times each semester. Mm-hmm. And because of these past two years, 
we transitioned to online semester, you know, online classes because of the pandemic, it seemed to go even more quickly. That's great. And and I think I've said this before in our conversation, but I've thought about this more since our conversation, Stacey. I just want to encourage people to get started. Please don't be intimidated. Please get started. It's something that I wanted to start for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I am so glad I started it. And I'm so glad I kept walking toward it. Please get started. That's beautiful. One last question. So what is something that you were terrified of and realized wasn't so bad? (laughs) Well, the good slash bad thing about me is I don't really think in terms of being terrified of things. I applied and I was accepted and I was very pleased. And it was coming at a moment of great transition in my life, both in my personal life and having just been laid off from a job. So I wasn't terrified about it. I didn't know enough to be terrified. I was just excited. And that's kind of par for the course for me. Was there anything that made you anxious or nervous going into the program? Well, once I got into it, I was anxious about not being the very top of the class. And you helped me with that. And you were like, look, just keep going, keep moving forward. And I learned so much from my cohort mates, from my professors. I felt like they really worked with me and helped me both from a thinking deeply in a theoretical way, which I had not been used to doing after many, many years as a practitioner. I hadn't thought about it from a a little bit of an academic remove. And also, while I had done statistics courses, both as an undergraduate and in my master's program, I had not done the quantity or the complexity of the statistics that we tackled. And yet, Dr. Hare and Dr. Howard were there every step of the way, helping and demystifying it. That's right. Is there anything else you would like to share with folks who are out there listening and considering or starting the program? I I would just say that it's never too early and it's never too late. So I would just encourage people to don't be intimidated, start the process and just keep moving, moving forward. Awesome. If a prospective student listening to this podcast were interested in reaching out to you, would you be okay with that? And how best should they do it? Yes, be happy to do that. The best way is probably through LinkedIn. And you can put my name, including my Lebanese last name in the show notes, and they'll be able to find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only Jennifer Zogby on LinkedIn. Great. Jen, thank you for your time today. I've really enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thanks for listening to Mitchell Moments presented by the University of South Alabama, Mitchell College of Business. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. It really helps the show be found by more wonderful listeners like you. If you want to know more about this podcast or the USA Mitchell College of Business and any of their undergraduate and graduate programs, visit the about page on mitchellmomentspodcast.com. All the different links will be there for you to get more information on enrollment, financial matters, and admission requirements. The links can also be found in the show notes. We would love to know what you think about our show. Please contact us at mitchellmomentspodcast.com with any comments, suggestions, or just to say hello. Until next time, thanks again for listening to the Mitchell Moments Podcast and go Jags!